Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tiger Eye. We've got a great episode for you this week. Anthony is finding out more about a new club that's been introduced to Ford this year, Speech and Debate. This new club is just getting started as the football season is now coming to a close. And with it means you won't see any more band performances at games. This episode, I'm talking with some involved with the band about the year so far and what's coming up. With no more football games and band performances at them, it means the basketball season has started. We recently just had our Midnight Madness fundraiser kickoff to the season, and this week Nathaniel is telling us all about it. But first, let's give it to Anthony to learn more about this new club opportunity at Ford. Students gather in Ms. Cooley's rooms to debate and defend topics that are important to them. Kimberly Garcia, the founder of Speech and Debate, was inspired by her college classes to help those here at Ford, while others were inspired to join for the sheer love of debating. Well, actually, I was taking a public speaking class in college, and it helped me so much. So I wanted to help other people develop their public speaking skills and their confidence when talking to crowds. Well, I think it was a, something kind of fun to do at school. It's something that I consider myself to be very good at. Um, and I think it's fun to kind of make points with people and tr try to just outwit them. Members of the club, through consistent debates, work on developing the skills of good public speakers. Um, I think confidence is probably the biggest thing in a public speaker and knowing what you're going to say and delivering it well. Well, practice makes perfect, honestly. So um, we're trying to practice like smaller debates here and there so that we can work up to bigger debates later on where they have to be more prepared and have more information. Speech and debate doesn't begin and end at Miss Cooley's doors. The skills they learn translate to their personal life and beyond. Well, I think it definitely makes you kind of look at issues in a more respectful way and it's kind of not you versus them when you're talking to people. You really learn to think. Um, you have to be able to respond accordingly to like how somebody believes um, and you have to be able to like back up your own opinions. No matter what topic you're looking to explore, whether serious or a little more lighthearted, speech and debate has it. Um, the last topic I debated about was electoral college and I didn't know whether I was going to be for it or against it and so I had to prepare both sides and then I debated against it which I liked because it was easier I thought and going for it. Honestly, the stupid ones, like, is a hot dog a sandwich? It's just, it's such a stupid question, I mean, like, topic, but it's just really fun to debate about. Although the club is less than a year old, membership has been on the rise, bringing in lots of new, passionate students. I think it's going great. We, uh, we, our membership's really good. We have a lot of people. It's definitely very engaging while we're in there, and I think everyone who is in there is having a lot of fun, and hopefully learning a lot. It's going pretty good. Um, we get to talk about topics we're actually passionate about. I mean, they might be stupid, but we're pretty passionate about them. Good work, speech and debate, for all that you've done so far. It'll be exciting to see where the club goes next. Thanks, Anthony. It's great to have another way for students to get involved at Ford. There are tons of ways to do this, one of them being banned. <laughs> There are many different kinds of classes you can join depending on what type of music you'd like to produce, including concert band, jazz band, and symphonic band. All three of these different kinds of branches of band have things in common. One that marks all three of them being the work and time that gets put in, as well as the life skills that you gain. It's very similar to any type of sport. You have to learn how to work together and you have to learn how to take constructive criticism. You have to learn how to fail and how to pick yourself back up. A sense of teamwork and that commitment to, to working towards something that not just benefits the individual student, but all of the other students in the group as well. Everyone in band has a crucial role to play. For drum majors like Kelly Sullivan, that means making sure the band stays on track. We keep the band in time and we are up front so that everybody can see and know what to do, when to do, and we have cues that will help each part come in at the right time. While the band members put in countless hours working to perfect their playing, band parents also put a lot of effort into making the band the best they can be. 
helping with many things, including the new uniforms this year, feeding our players at away games, and our annual classic. But it does definitely take an army to get these kids from place to place and to make sure that they have a good season. In class with her bandmates five days a week, as well as the after school practices and competitions, band members see the bonds they make as a key factor as to why they enjoy being in the class. We are together almost every day of the week. Um, we're always around each other. We have fun together. We go on trips. I think it's just the community we all have. And even like outside of just Ford, we are kind of like family with other bands as well. I would say like the relationships that I've built, because I mean, band is seniors through freshmen. And outside of band, I know for a fact I would not be talking to most of these people, but like it's forced relationships in a good way. And I really do love the relationships that we do build. It's awesome. A good sum of Ford's band have been playing since middle school. For some, staying in class throughout high school, the reason is their passion for music. And for others, it's because of their enjoyment and the good experiences they gain. We bounce off of each other's energy and it's just a lot of fun to just be with them and playing the music that we love. A, like an eighth grader coming up to high school, I feel like they should at least do one year of marching band because it is like a very like, it's really fun and special and you make tons of friends and you have so, make so many memories and it's just like, it's, it's fun. After high school, the skills you make in band class are something that you take with you through life. It definitely gives the students self-discipline and motivation to work on a, a project or a, a series of ideas and concepts that makes them a part of a team. That commitment to, to working towards something that not just benefits the individual student, but all of the other students in the group as well. Band seems like a lot of fun. But if you're looking for something maybe a little different, more in the sports category, Nathaniel this week is taking a closer look at Midnight Madness. To help start off the 2023 basketball season, the men's basketball team hosted Midnight Madness. Midnight Madness is a fundraiser to help the team get back into their groove and to help raise some money for the team. So I think um, talking to Coach Whitener, his plan was to be able to help with that, to purchase the warm-ups for the kids, um, and then to be able to provide some helps with some pre-game meals um, when they're traveling or before games to do that. But the, but the two main things were the warm-ups. Um, and to help with pre-game meal to cover the cost of some of that. For a newer teacher to Ford, Thomas Peeler, Midnight Madness is a great way to see some of the students and to help him get rooted more into the school. Oh, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, it's really fun getting to see the kids go out there and just uh, just play for the fun of it. You know, a lot of times when you get to see them in games and everything, it's, it's high stress moments and you know things can be a little bit different for them, but just getting to see them out there and just having fun, you know, playing each other, the varsity and the, and the JV, it's, it's really good for them. I enjoy that. Without having a Midnight Madness for several years, this one brought back a healthy crowd of people to watch. Many of them seemed to enjoy the environment and the different events. My favorite would probably be the JV game. There were so many JV players and it was like going back and forth at it. It was actually a good watch. I like the alumni game. I think that was fun to watch some of the kids that you've seen play basketball here four, five, six, seven, eight, eight years ago. Um, still, try to, still try to go out there and play and it's just fun to watch and bring back um, old faces. Uh, them getting to play with the parents was, was kind of fun to watch because you know you don't get to see that too often. You can definitely see uh, you know some little rivalries here and there between the, win the parents and the kids, especially when it was on defense on the other one. With the start of the season coming up, some of the players think Midnight Madness is a great way to warm them up for the season. I feel like we're feeling a lot confident because we work together very well. I mean, we figured out that um, we're just uh, we have great chemistry as a team. I think it's good. I mean, it helps just raise support from the community, raise money. It's just a good way to start off the season. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, and we'll see you the next.